Hi guys, it's me Toby Tweeting, and today I'll show you my failed video of how to make panda cookies. I call it failed since I left the cookies in the oven for a bit too long and they got a bit too crispy. I used a recipe on the cookie cutter package, but next time I'll try a different recipe and hopefully it'll work out. Toby Tweeting. So the ingredients the recipe calls for are 60 grams of butter, 160 grams of flour, and instead of cocoa, I'll be using pandan flavor paste. I'll need 60 grams of sugar, and lastly, 25 grams of egg. The easiest way to measure this is to crack the egg, then mix it like a scrambled egg, and then weigh it on a scale. Now I'm going to get my butter, and then with a silicone spatula, I'm going to mix it until it's soft and smooth. It's really cold here, so it took a really long time to soften up, and an easier method is to leave the butter out until it's room temperature. Now I'll add the sugar in small batches, and then I'll mix until it's smooth. Once it's all mixed in, add the egg, and I added it all at once since it wasn't a lot of liquid, but you could do it in two portions, that way it's easier for you to stir together. Now it's a soft, almost fluffy consistency. I added the flour little by little, but I've been told that if you knead it too much, it becomes tough. So maybe try to add all the flour at once and then knead it in. My cookie was tough, but I wasn't really sure if it was because it was overcooked. So, yeah. <laughs> Now it's a pretty uniform dough ball. I cut the dough in half with my spatula and that way I have equal pieces of dough. Then I get my pandan flavor and put a little bit on one of the dough halves. like a heart. Okay, so after admiring the heart, time to mix it in. Pandan doesn't really stain your fingers um, if you wipe it away, but try not to get any on your clothes just because it might stain that. <laughs> if in the end you want a darker shade or more pandan flavor, go ahead and add more. I like it like this, so it's all done. Now get some plastic wrap and wrap two pieces inside and toss them in the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour. So after it's chilled, grab your dough and roll it out. Right now I'm rolling out the green parts which will go on the bottom of the cookie. Next get out the black cookie cutters and cut out the pieces. My camera wasn't working properly so some of the beginning footage was lost but hopefully this is sort of straightforward-ish. Also, keep the scraps between the cute pieces. At the end, we gather all the pieces and roll it out again to cut more pieces. And then I move those finished pieces to the silk pad covered baking sheet. If you don't have a silk pad, I do recommend putting like um, baking paper down uh, just so that the cookies don't stick to the bottom of the pan and it makes it easier and that way your cookie doesn't get destroyed when you're done cooking it. <laughs> Now unwrap the plain dough and start rolling it out. When I first got the dough out, it was super hard to roll since I left it in there for about two hours. Since I got stuck in the snow outside, um, <laughs> it's a really long story. But if you accidentally leave it in the fridge for too long, let it sit outside in room temperature for about 30 minutes or maybe a little bit less until it starts being a little bit softer that you could actually roll it out without having to like hit your rolling pin on it. 
Now the inside of the panda will be cut with the white cookie cutters. First I'll do the head. On my first try I tried cutting it out and then putting the face cutter down but it only does a slight indentation instead of actually cutting out the pieces that you need to be done. So instead of all that work I just cut out the head and then used the face cutter to cut out the eyeballs and it came out really good. And sometimes the eyeballs get stuck in the cookie cutter and I just get my toothpick and poke it out. <laughs> everything is cut out, I like to get the spatula and pick each piece up. That way they don't stick to the counter or whatever it is you are cutting them out on. If you try to lift them up to swat your hands without using a spatula, it might actually break or deform part of it. Um, so I just found the spatula easier. Once it's off the mat though, it's a lot easier to pick up without deforming it. Also, I like to get all the bits and pieces in between out just so it makes it a little bit easier to move around. Now it's time to assemble. Place the head on the body of the panda and press down lightly. Try not to press too hard or you risk deforming the panda's face. And then place the belly and it's all done. Voila! If the crumbs on the edge bother you, I find that simply rubbing your finger over it and it falls off. For the eyes, I just get a toothpick and go over the edges and ta-da! It's as good as new. Before assembling all your pandas, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And once they're all done, put your cute pandas in the oven for about 5 to 10 minutes. And don't repeat what I did, take your cookies out of the oven the minute they're done. Leaving them in the oven with the oven off is a complete no-no. And here are my sad looking overcooked cookies. And when made correctly, these are really cute and a great gift for friends, siblings, or anyone who really likes cute things. had a bit of plain leftover dough, so I just made heads with different faces and it came out pretty cute. Another fun touch is to get your cookie and put Nutella in the center and then sandwich it with another cookie. This was more of a like a don't do what I did and maybe it'll come out okay video, but I hope you guys liked it anyways. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Transition music by Tam Music. You can visit them at www.tammusic.com. Background music by Kevin McLeod. And you can visit him at www.incomputech.com. Programs used to edit the video are Adobe Premiere Pro CS5, and Adobe Photoshop CS5. Equipment used are an Audio-Technica 2020 USB microphone and the Canon Rebel T1i DSLR with a 50mm macro lens.